I want us to talk about distractions. I want to talk about I want us to talk about distractions, but before we talk about the distractions, I want us to be able to talk to to read a passage. Okay, to read a passage. If you want to read it in your own time, you will note it down. It is Nehemiah six one. Okay, I felt. I mean, when I was looking for because I've seen distraction taking people down of recent. And so many people don't know that they're being distracted, but their attention is going away to things that are actually not building them. Or they're giving their attention. Attention is power. Attention is energy. Attention is a means of transaction. That means you're getting something, but maybe it's not something that you really want. Okay? So, uh, let's read this passage uh, together. I know that it's going to take some time, but I, want, I wanted us to have a background of what we are going to talk about. Six says... That when word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies that, had re that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I'm carrying on a great project. I cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Number four says that four times they sent the same message. And each time I gave them the same answer. Number five. Then the fifth time, Sam Ballard sent this, his aid to me with the same message. And in his hand was a sealed letter in which was written. Quotes, it is reported among the nations, and Geshem says it is true, that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to those reports, you are about to become their king, and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judea. Now this report will get back to the king, so come, let us meet together. Number eight. I sent him this reply, nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out in your head. Number nine, they were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. Guys, I, I, I mean, I've been reading these passages. I've been reading. Have you heard the story? Is it intriguing? As in someone raises up and says, I am going to, to rebuild a wall, okay? And by the time he actually raises up, because then we are going to break it down so that you can understand the gist of this. By the time he raises up, Nehemiah was in the king's palace. That means he was eating good food. He was sleeping well. Like he didn't have anything. He was not lacking. Now, someone comes and gives him the, the, the news that the walls are in ruins, okay? And so he decides, he's like, his heart is touched. He's like, how can I be here eating good food while the walls of Jerusalem are down? While, just like you can say, when you joined the mentorship, you said, how can I be in my business as Zahara selling my wigs and making money? But I know there are people who do not know how to manage their finances. That touched your heart. Like it pained you. And because of that pain, you do not want to see any woman that lacks money. You're like, you know what? No, you're not going to stay in that marriage without a penny. You're not going to stay to operate that business without a penny. So you could have had, you could have continued with your importing business and gone on without doing anything. You could have said, let me just manufacture my soap and sell my soap, make my money, go back and sleep, and have fun with my children, take them to good schools, buy my wife all the clothes that she wants, and why are you here? It's because there is a pain. You, apart from you wanting to be better, you want to better others. You're like, you know what? If there's someone else that can gain from manufacturing soap, I am going to teach them how to do it. I'm going to, so that was the pain that Nehemiah possessed. He was like, no, I am not just sitting here. I am not just sitting here, okay? So if some of us are taking notes, one of the most useful weapons, one of the most useful weapons as a world changer, as a transformer, as a gladiator, as one who is concerned about people, 
is your attention. Your attention is a weapon. Your attention is so important. Because we are all fighting for the future. And the people that we want to help are fighting for their future. Right? So that means if we are fighting for our future and the people that we, we, we are mentoring, the people that we are helping, the people that we are counseling, we are coaching, we are holding their hands, they are also fighting for their and we are saying that the most important weapon that you will ever possess is your attention. Do you know why all these social media platforms are coming up in the world? What are they looking for? What? All they are looking for are eyeballs. If I can have more eyeballs, if I can have more fingers scrolling, if I can have, and that is how they are making their money. Because all the reports, they will be like, you know what? So, so many people viewed your post. So many people saw, we are selling rich. We are selling visibility. We are selling. So that means where your attention goes, it is so important that you do not just waste a whole day scrolling because then for them, they are turning into statistics. What are you gaining from those statistics? What? If you're saying, I want to change the world. I want to change people's lives. I want to transform people's lives. Or I want to create a better life for myself. That means you should be able to limit everything that takes your attention. It should be something that you endorse and say, this one I permit. Let it take my attention. Why? Because I am gaining. The reason as to why we are seated here is because there is something to gain from this. So your attention, you realize that some people have even paid things and given attention to wrong things. Recently, I was told people subscribe to porn. <laughs> yeah, they subscribe and they pay money. They had earned money. No, don't people pay money to, uh, to, to go to Kapapla? Wanji? And let me tell you, their attention will be taken. Even girlfriends will not have that attention. Even wives will not have that attention. Otherwise, if you're a wife, they will send you in the house. <laughs> Why? Because they will be scheming. Now, who is on top of who is who is on top of the, of the table? Whoa, whoa, what, what is happening? Speculating. Now they are in Lugambo. Why? Because their attention has been taken. Instead of a border, border man to stay on his stage and concentrate to make money, they're in a in a betting house somewhere. Just loitering around and just wishing that one day, one day like this, I hit the jackpot. I get a hundred million. And by the way, they will be there even saying, Nancy Funa, if I get it. They will even have their plans. Eh? Yeah. And let me tell you, all their plans will be dubious. <laughs> all their plans will be not, not profitable at all, not building. There is no one that has ever said that I'm going to get money from betting or from gambling. And they say, I'm going to construct a house. Like, I don't know where those thoughts go, the, the nice thoughts. Eh? You'll find someone saying, ah, if I say I just want to buy a big diggy, a big motorcycle, that is to graduate from a boda boda to a motorcycle. <laughs> and for, <laughs> like, that will be, I was like, ah, I saw a certain car. I saw a certain car. So you see, attention, okay? Attention is what we exchange for our future. That is why you should never take for granted people who give you even, you know, when you talk about your clients, when you talk about the people that you're going to impact, when you talk about, do never take for granted the time anyone gives you. I don't take it for granted. I don't. Whatever we look like today, okay? Whatever we look like today, or we look at, we focus on. That is who we are going to be in the future. Whatever we are focusing on. So you realize there are people that are focusing on learning business. There are people that are focusing also on all their minds. I don't know how or who told us this. All the minds of single ladies are about where do I go to Kwetega? Where do, as in how do I land the next? 
man. You realize that whenever your focus is on something, that is what I tell whenever I meet a single lady that is really frustrated about not getting a mate or getting a man in her life, I tell her that is the first thing you sh that is the first sign for you to take attention off that. Take attention off it, pursue your purpose, pursue growth. Let me tell you, there is a level you get at and you just attract the things that you need, the rooms that you go into, the language that you speak, the networks that you have made. Because they say your network is your net worth. So you, before you know it, someone knows that so-and-so is a single person and someone is saying that, you know what, if you could get this girl, you, I mean, she, she's really gifted, she's good at what she's doing, and all of a sudden, someone is spotlighting you and they're headhunting you, they're chasing after you, they love you and they love you for the good reasons. But because you're in a season where things are bad, you put all your focus on all the bad things. Remember, we say that what we focus on is who we become. So you see someone that has wasted 10 years of their lives looking for men, as if you can look for them. And actually, it's the other way around. They are supposed to look for, for you. <laughs> they are supposed to look for you. You should be building, building, and building, okay? And I know that it's not easy. It's not as easy at is, as, as it is when I'm saying it right now. But there are times when you get to the end of the road and you're like, I have done this same thing for the past one year, for the past six months, and it has not paid off. Mm -hmm. It's time to do something else. It's time, to, it's time to change the game. I can't be doing the same thing every day, expecting the, a different results. So where you focus on what you look at today, what you, you give your attention, that's exactly who you are going to become. So you're not going to become any different. The future will be here, and the future is when? Here. Next minute, next second. Hmm? So where you are right now is a summation of everything you have focused on in the past 10 years or in the past. You realize they have gotten you to where you are. Now, if you want more, if you want better, then that is when you start choosing and saying, no, I'm not focusing on this. I'm not focusing on pity party. I'm not focusing on rumors. I am not focusing on people pleasing. No, I am building me and fortifying me and strategically positioning myself to attract the money that I want, to attract the life that I want, and to be able to impact other people's lives. Okay? What are you doing with your attention? Ask yourself. I just want you to take a minute. What are you doing with your attention? Because then you are getting exactly what you are paying for. I told you our attention is currency. Hmm? So you, you give your attention to social media scrolling. And by the end of the day, you feel guilty. How many of us have ever felt guilty? Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. But let me tell you, when someone sees you putting on so well and smelling so nice and getting out of that office where you have done nothing the whole day, hmm? they are like, yeah, chikuwa. <laughs> you know, they are like, oh my God. Like, you look, let me tell you, that is why you should never admire things that you don't know. Some people look admirable, but they are filled with guilt. You look at them and you're like, oh my God, I think all their boxes are tick, 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 tick. I think they had a planner. They had their to-do list. I think they even finished everything on their to-do list. And guess what? <laughs> and then uh, TikTok sends a, 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 a notification. That these days, that these phones, you don't need to go to an app to open up. You just... It just comes up here and you click, you go to TikTok. And guess what? There will still be like another pointer and arrow that says go back to, to, to YouTube. And then you will go back to YouTube. As soon as you get a notification from Instagram, you tap, you go to Instagram, and then you start scrolling, screenshotting. And then after that, an email comes. You tap the email. I can't miss this email. You go. And then someone walks into office and is like, thinks that you've been doing things, powerful things. <laughs> and it happens to even students. 
You, start, you go with your books, and by the way, we always have good intention. You go with your books, you even line them up so well, and you're like, you know what, I am going to read. <laughs> now just imagine if we had distractions in a generation where we didn't have phones. Because I used to be in school, and I would line up my books properly for prep, and I would go to the library, and then I would start drawing people's heads. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, I would start drawing. We had a head boy who had a head that like, was like. <laughs> at one point, I was going to be expelled out of a school because of drawing people's heads. <laughs> no, just imagine that is a. Do you know how old I am? That is a generation that did not have internet. But even a generation with internet, without internet, had distractions. And so, you, you read last minute. You are going into a paper. You're, <laughs> you're doing summaries. And then, yeah, I don't know if some of you had some of those bullies who would be like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know. Because you'll be asking around, asking around. And do you, so you realize that the things that have your attention should be so important you should rate their importance before giving them attention. And sometimes the attention we don't even choose. How many of us, someone has ever said something about you or it's a rumor and you just failed to shake it from your head? You want to concentrate, you even want to cook, eh? but you are mixing things, but you are thinking about, eh, hey, naka today. As in, of all things, that they could only think about this and... You're giving it attention. What are you getting? You're getting, you're sulking. Your children cannot even receive a hug from you. Your, your food is getting burnt. And all of a sudden, when they ask you about burning, then you'll be like, but it's just once. Do I burn food every day? That means you're already overwhelmed. You're already frustrated. Why? Your attention, you gave it to something without thinking that you're giving attention to something. And now, the, ti the time has gone. And if you're not careful, you will do that the next day. You will do that the other day, and the month will go, and the year will go. And then the, you will have nothing to show about the vision board or the visions that you wrote down and the resolutions that you wrote down. Is that the life that we want to live? Especially as world changers, as people that want to take to, to, to bring a wave to this nation in manufacturing, in speaking life into people's marriages. That means people are expecting better of, from us. So that means you should expect better from you because you're the only one who can audit your life. You're the only one who can audit where your attention goes. It's, it's better that you actually go and sleep because sleep is doing something. It's rejuvenating your body. Hmm? Your cells are being reconstructed. So even your aging process is slowing down. Sleep is good anytime. But what? Constantly. Being, wa wa watching, um, I, I know that some of us love series, but do you know that you can get spoiled on series? As in, you want to know. And then those people studied, let me tell you, there is a science of attention. A science of? That is, whole, that is what Hollywood producers will study. That is what marketeers will study. That is what all social media, market, uh, the so social media platforms will study because they are paid to get attention. So now, for you, you're just falling into their gaps. Yeah, that is falling into there. But that is when you come back to being intentional and saying, wait a minute, is this what I want for my life? What will I show for this exactly? Okay, so, so many of us have underestimated the importance of our attention. But let me tell you, if the enemy wants to destroy your future, they start by taking your attention. If anyone wants to destroy your future, they start by taking away your attention. And let me tell you, some people don't, uh, the enemy, sometimes when you talk about the enemy, we think the devil is going to come back, to come in black. No, sometimes there are people in our lives. And for them, they are just, they gain from seeing us distracted. Have you seen people that, um, you, they, you seem so serious and they're like, ah, but you're so serious. And then they will bring bivosi, they will bring conversations, and they will bring, as in, uh, oh, I, you shouldn't be the good one. Like, you, why? Why? You should at least do something that shows us that you can also go crazy or that you're also not so serious after all. 
Have you ever see, been, seen some of those siblings that they will trap their brothers or their sisters into doing something and then when the, when the father or mother asks because they've been calling this daughter as the most, the clean, the most serious and like, ah, as in they talk to you into it and all of a sudden they're the ones giving you, as in they're like, you thought she was great, but she's our level. We are, we are the same. <laughs> we are the same. There is always, and by the way, they start young. They start young. So our future depends on what we learn to ignore. The art of ignoring. Ignoring is very painful. Hmm? Very painful. When someone tells you, you ignore her. Ha! Huh? It's like you want to fight it. Eh? You're clenching your teeth and someone is like, ignore her, I ignore her. You feel like, you know what, on I should have punched her, even just one, one small punch. I should have said something big that would have pained her. And you know, yes, I would have assured her, given her the peace of my mind. <laughs> but someone says, ignore it. Calm down. But coming down, you calm down, but your mind is racing. Yeah? You, you try... You even drink some water, but it's just not getting away. So the, land, the art of ignoring is very, very, very hard. Have you ever been, um, and it's not even just about the people that, uh, that drive, but have you ever seen how distracting a fly can be? A fly. Mm? <laughs> for, the, for those of you that drive, do you know that a fly can, cause you, can make you cause an accident? Like you are on the road. You clearly know this fly is not important. But do you know that by the mere fact that it's doing zzzz, <laughs> as in it draws your attention, you know it. By the time you actually hear it, you know it that this is something I should just put down my windscreen so that it gets out. And by the way, they are very stubborn. You put down the windscreen, it turns to the side that doesn't have. You put down the other side, it turns this side. You put down in front, they go behind. And that is how distractions happen. They are all around us. We are surrounded by distractions. You don't have to look for distractions. But if you want to be sober and to, be, to calm down, that takes time. That takes boldness. That takes bravery. That even takes another person to come down and say that, you know what, calm down. That should not take your attention. Because sometimes we fail. We're like, Nandi Mugambia Yaka. <laughs> you know, I would have, and sometimes you feel that it's okay when you say a wrong well, something you shouldn't have said. You put it down, and sometimes you will look for the most hurting words, for the most hurting words, and you will put them down in a message. You're not even breathing. You're not even. You're not even. You know, and you s send. And then you feel like, <sighs> let them feel it. <laughs> but let me tell you, if you're a person that has been called by God to be a transformer in this generation, to change the world, this is what happens. You go back and delete for all. <laughs> you go, have you ever gone back and deleted a message? And you're like, you know what? That was a moment of anger. I should have let it pass. But now what are they going to think about? Ah, yeah, they have read it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, luli wabade epika. You know, you were just saying, I want to give them a piece of money. They should understand that I know everything about them. That if I decided to do, I can do worse. Hey, what a man can do, a woman can do. Ten yeah. times better. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're the one that is guilt trapped. Yeah. Now, you're, you're the one that say, you know, I didn't mean those words. You know, I was angry. You know, I was. <laughs> but now, the fly has made you knock. Because if you had put it in your mind that this is a fly, you would keep your eyes on the road. You keep your eyes on the road or you park the car, you put down all the winds or even open the doors and then you get back on your journey. But because, how many of us have ever slept while driving? <laughs> Let me tell you. Or to lot You will see it. You will see it. It just feels like uh, it just feels like, like a warmth that is coming, and all of a sudden you are fighting with yourself. You're like, no, I'm still awake. I'm still awake. 
Well, you can take water, you can eat apples, you can take rock, boom, I have done all of them and nothing has worked. When sleep has come, it has come. And then you can never get the wisdom to pack. And guess what? If you dare pack, immediately the sleep goes. Mm. Immediately it goes. And then you start driving again. You, you even smile while you're, while you're dozing. And while you're, then you, there is a, let me tell you, God saves us. God saves us. Because there are times you just find yourself entering a bush and then zoom. And then you're zooming back into the road where you have not calculated where someone, whether someone is coming behind you. And zoom, you're back on the road. And then you're looking around, you're looking into the side mirrors. And then you're back on the road. But let me tell you, after two minutes, <laughs> but you're going and let me tell you sometimes you'll even accelerate faster <laughs> you will step on the gas you're going you're, and sometimes you bump into people you're like ah, I was about to smash into that car and you but you can never get yourself together and say you know what I really need to to rethink what I am doing okay so distractions can only work if we let them that means we have the power to choose where to place our attention. And if we don't give some, someone our attention, they don't have it. Or something, our attention, they actually don't have it. I've said it so many times, how to overcome narcissism, one of the ways to do that is because they're attention seekers. Every narcissist is an attention seeker. The moment you deny them the attention, then they, st they start to think you're giving it to someone, you're doing something, what are you doing? So now they're out of their, of their comfort. Now that is why most times when you give a narcissist silent treatment, they are all over you. They will worship you, they will call you sweet names, they will reconcile back with you, they will even apologize for what they have not done. Give them two days. Or get back into good books with them and refer to them as whether if it's a husband, as my boo, or if it's a girlfriend, as my, my sweet pumpkin and what, the moment you have broken the code, now they go back into their sense. They are like, ah, I'm the one who has the upper hand in this home. I am the one who is the dominator. The other person is just a, 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 a rug. Yeah. So that means we have a chance to say, what am I giving my attention to? What am I giving my attention to? Now, for those of you that are just joining us, we have read Nehemiah, okay? Nehemiah 6. And it has been a beautiful, a beautiful, for me, when I read it in, in, um, in reference to destruction, it was, I mean, it was so eye-opening. So eye-opening. Because when he says that, but they were scheming to hurt me, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project. Who are many of us who are saying we are not here carrying on a, a great project? Huh? Is this a great project? What you are building, the businesses that you're building, the empires that you're building, the, the coaching practice that you're building, it is a great. And let me tell you, sometimes when you start creating a great project, that is when destruction starts coming. Because be, when he was in the king's palace doing nothing, why didn't they come? Why didn't they send whatever they were sending? By the time someone sends six messages, seven messages, and you're giving them the same response, like the last response you, you gave them was not enough, they will send it again, and they will send it again. That means they want your attention. They want you off that project. Some of you, you're going to start posting your pictures and aligning your social media, and some people will, like, will start saying, ah, she's showing off now. Huh? I wonder who is misleading her. And then one time, they will see you celebrating Bahati, and they will say, ha, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> that woman spoils everyone she touches. She spoils everyone she touches. You're, you're here getting spoiled, by the way. If you didn't know, you're here getting what? Getting spoiled. <laughs> and, and you know, all of a sudden, like, you were writing weird things or normal things on your social media, but when you start writing things that make sense, that transform people's lives, all of a sudden, you're a wise acre. All of a sudden, do you think anyone is going to follow you? Do you think anyone is going to even listen to you? Do you, do you even have the, the right to say that? You even sound like you're a copycat. You even, they are going to call you all sorts of names. Because why? They can't do it 
why are you doing it? They will even send someone, I think it was here, when someone told us that they even sent someone else to go and tell them that you are wasting time and we yanika yanika, like you are really exposing, that you're exposing your stupidity. Like, my goodness, exposing my stupidity by writing something that is of value to other people. So they had to send their brother, they had to send their cousin, they had to, let them stop, let them, they are really wasting time. Those things, wasting time. When someone has found their purpose, when someone has gained their happiness, when someone is on the road to building something, they can work as well, be employed, but they are also building something that they like. What is wrong with that? Why can't people learn to mind their business? <laughs> to stay in there, learn. Because by the time you start building something, you are in your lane. You're saying, you know what? This is my calling. This is what God, these are the gifts God has put inside of me. This is no one's, it wasn't a conference call. And you didn't do nigina to pay for mentorship. <laughs> eh? You know, you didn't. You decided and said, this is my hard earned money. So I'm going to give my attention to the things that are deserving. Even the Bible talks about it, that if something is praiseworthy, if something is good, think, and that's a principle. Because we say that principles are the pathways to the promises. So if the principle is, is think about these things, that is the peace that we get. When you give your attention to the right things, when you give your attention to the right things, you're never guilty about when you even see anyone doing anything, you're like, you know what? <laughs> As in, bring, bring it on. Do your best. Because my attention, and you know when someone does something bad and you're not giving them attention, it feels bad. It, it, like, it, it just feels like, this is belittling me. This is kunyoma of the highest. As in, I w let me throw my tantrums. Let me do my dubious things, but see me. That means they know that attention is very important. And the enemy knows it. But sometimes we don't know it. So this is where he says that four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same answer. And then the fifth time, that is when now they bring in the rumor. They are like, if we have sent you, if we have called you to come down, because this now the wall had gotten a bit up. Why didn't they come before the wall was built? Okay, so now they turn into, into a rumor. And some of us, we have seen how people can use rumors. Eh? We have seen, number one, how people can use rumors. Okay, so... We talked about him being placed in the palace. He was okay, but he was burdened, okay? He was blessed and burdened. Most of us are here because we are blessed and burdened. Do you agree with that? You are blessed and burdened. You have food to eat, but you're thinking about the unprivileged. You have a house over your head, but you're thinking about people that are not waking up to their potential. And you're like, you know what? I want to help them in personal growth. I want so you are blessed, but you are burdened. And your heart got gripped with compassion. That is why you are here. That is why we are growing together. So what it said that Nehemiah prayed at the end. Because we're not going to, to, to finish up every, every, everything. But remember when he said that, nothing like that is, uh, what you're saying is happening, you're just making it up in your head. By the time my Bible writer writes and says you're making it up in your head, <laughs> you're just making it up in your, in your head. As in, I don't have time to go there, please. Don't, don't think about me like that, please. Don't. Agamba, no, you're making it up in your head, so let it stay in your in your in your head but it says that that but i prayed now strengthen my hands okay and one of the other prayers that actually uh, uh, he he prayed for were about favor we're not going to read the whole passage because if we read we are going to take a lot of time but he prayed for favor he prayed for favor coach fifi if you see it tell me that particular uh, that particular in nehemiah where where uh, niv where he prayed for favor. Now he is gripped by pain and he is saying, instead of saying, when you're gripped by pain, you would say, give me buildings, give me money so that I can go and give out, give me this and this. No, he knew that I don't need these possessions. That is not what he prayed for. He prayed for 
favor and says that I, ne I need the favor. I don't need the buildings. I don't need the money. I don't need anything. While everyone is asking for everything, he prayed for favor. Because he knew he needed to create strategic relationships in order to accomplish the task. I've said it before here in the mentorship. I know some of us were around, some of us were not around. But I say that one of the things that we have to pray for, and I think I will, I will share that video because we have it in the mentorship, it's favor. Because there is nothing, no task you're going to accomplish. As in, how many people are uploading videos? How many? Many. So if you do not have favor upon you, because favor is activated by sight. Someone sees you and you are favored in their sight. So Nehemiah prayed and said that, God, that you will give me favor in the sight of the king. He prayed before he even went. So for someone to see and say that, you know what, I saw her video and I saw her social media. I read one post like this. I just talked to her one, one day like this and I wanted to, I gave her the contract and I gave her the business and I gave her, that is favor. That you don't have to go and say, God, give me that tall building. No, God, I need a lot of money. God, I need a lot of this. Sometimes what we need are strategic positionings of relationships, and that calls for favor. That someone will look at you, and they will want to partner with you. Someone will look at you, and they will want to hear you out. Okay? How many of us don't need that? So many of us, we need to be able to create strategic partnerships with kings, you know, with CEOs of companies, with executives, with, with people out there. There are people that are in places, strategic places that we need to get into. And it's just a call away. But sometimes have you ever felt the need to call someone to ask for a certain favor and you're like, oh God, I even don't know what their answer is going to be. Your prayer in that moment should say, God, let your favor go ahead of me. Do you know that even your, your voice can, can activate favor? Someone calls you and you talk to them and they feel like doing everything that you have requested. And then when you ask them, but and there are other people who requested for the same thing. And they're like, there are other people who requested for the same thing, but you sounded different. There was something different about you when I talked to you on phone. But there are times you call when you are dry and empty and you're frustrated and you call and someone does not give you a time of their day. Or even if they give you a minute, you even fail to kusengeka, to put your words in order. You start with the last things and then you, put, you bring the last things first. Until they're like, you know what, I'm in a meeting. You know people can have excuses. So we need even us that are here that god will raise up into those formidable people that when they want to consult anything they will come to us there are people that are going to need you there are people that are not are going to need your help okay so you have to see how important you are right now you have to see how important you are right now so that you can minimize the places where you take your attention to the moment you know you are not worthy that is where you are too available to so many things, right? To scrolling on social media, to, um, and so, some people have even ever attended events where they were not invited. Hmm? <laughs> no, like seriously, there is a point in life, by the way, where you get to, and you will get to it, where you get to, and it's only invite basis that you have to, to attend. So if the moment you know, that I am important, then you start saying, you know what, I can go here, I can't go here, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that. It will be very automatic. So I want us to get to that place because right now we are hyper builders and we cannot divide our attention between things that are, invalu are not valuable and things that are valuable. Even God talks about it, that that day you will separate the things that are valuable from those that are not valuable. I will make you my mouthpiece. Have you ever read that scripture? I will make you mine. But that is the day you learn to distinguish what is valuable and what is not valuable. That means God knew we will be distracted. And the things that are not valuable are screaming, they are flashy, they need our immediate attention, and they are an emergency. And the things that are valuable, by the way, they are very silent.
but you have to give them att because it's hard work. If you want to read, if you want to research, if you want to pray, if you do, you, do you know all those things that are an uphill task. Yeah. That you can decide that this is my moment for devotion, and then all of a sudden, a uh, 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 TikTok bundi comes huh, and decides uh, this guy dances so much. Let me have, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at the dance. And all of a sudden, it turns into 30 minutes. It turns into an hour. So the distraction looks look like the easier way out. So that is, we are escaping something. We are escaping the hard work. Here, back to Nehemiah. He says that if, I, if you find your servant, if I find favor in your sight, this is now Nehemiah going to the king. After praying, he went to the king. And he says that, and the king asked him, what do you want? Do you see what favor does? You're not going to explain a lot, but I will ask you, what do you want? And the way we change the world is by being out there, asking for what we actually want. We are not going to grow while we are hiding ourselves. Just like I said, you can't light your candle and put it under the basket or put it under the bed. You have to make sure that you put it out there. And so many of us have identity crisis. So many of us have identity crisis. We feel, believe so little about ourselves, so minimal about ourselves, we don't believe that we can amount to anything. Let me tell you, one of the things as to why I have been on this journey for all these years, my self-belief is something you can never knock. Never. Like even if you told me what, you can never knock it. Now, I don't know whether it's just in some things, some people, whether it's just an inbuilt thing, but I want to believe that God gives us the, the ability to build ourselves. Believe, especially if you see yourself according to what he says. You are created wonderfully and beautifully. That the nations are waiting for you. The nations are not waiting for weak people. No, they are waiting for giants like you. You have it inside of you. So I want you to deal away with identity crisis because the moment your identity is mixed, that is how we give attention to things that don't need attention. Because then, they, do you know how it feels to give someone a piece of your mind? You feel like you have grown some wings. Eh? You feel good. Why? Because you naturally, you feel small. You were like those that were sent to go to spy the land. And they're like, ha, those guys are six feet and they have six fingers. And they have six legs, <laughs> six, uh, six toes. And so they were like, we look like grasshoppers. So by the time you name yourself a grasshopper, clearly you're going to give your attention to things that are not deserving. Why? Because in order to kuzimbru kukamu, you have to give people your peace of mind. I, I don't want you to ever feel small about anything. You are the greatest that has ever existed. You hold the key to whatever empire that you are supposed to build. You are equipped. You are wise. You are brilliant. Like there is nothing short on you. The only thing you have to do is activate. And we activate by doing. We activate by ignoring certain things and giving our attention to the right things. We activate by doing the hard things. We activate by going even when others are giving up. That is how we activate. We activate by getting this burden and sometimes, not even sometimes, but all the time, praying about it. That as I go out, God go with me. Okay? So, when you start building, that is when destruction comes. I, and, and it's about to come in a major way, okay? And when you are low, no one is going to bother you. When you are not building anything, when you are doing unimportant things, no one is going to bother you. But start doing important things, people are going to bother you. Start creating the business, that is how they will say that the logo is bad. And then you'll be like, mm. <laughs> I know. By the way, they will have all the stories of who has failed and who has not made it. So you start, you start yogurt, yog, and they're like, but how many yogurt brands do we have? And they will speak in your hearing. How many yogurt brands do we have? Like, are they all profitable? And, they, and some of them, by the way, the ones that will distract you and even mention all those things will be professors, people that you hold in a high regard. And all of a sudden you'll be like, ah, by the time they say it like that, it seems I'm on a wrong so when you are doing nothing, no one is going to come at you, but start doing something. That is when everyone is going to come and do something or say something about it or whatever it is that they want to say. Okay? So you can't stop doing what you are doing, not for anything. You remember when he said, 
why should I come down? I have a big project. I am busy. Everyone that is calling you down wants to distract you. Do you know that sometimes if the enemy cannot manage us, he sends people in form of, in form of distractions? He can send a wife or he can send a husband. He can send a boyfriend, a fiancé in form of distraction. And you have to fight a constant battle of wanting to stay on the right course. But this person is also head bent and held strong to divert you from the course. Until you put your foot down and you're like, you know what? Try as hard as you can. You're not breaking this down. You're not. Because some of us are going to wake up when we are too old. And then we're like, ah, but I gave up this because of this. I know that life is full of sacrifices, but there are things that we should be very, very um, careful not to give up on because we want to please other people. And people who are agreeable every time. Nehemiah would have said that, you know what, uh, you know, let me just go down and hear them out. Buntubulamu. Sometimes we don't need buntubulamu. Mm -mm. No. Like seriously, sometimes we don't need it. Sometimes what we need, if we know we are doing the right thing, is to put our foot down and say, you know what, I'm not changing my mind. And you know, I am not doing it that way, I am doing it this way. If it fails, I will know that it has failed. But let me try it and see what can come out of it. When I was starting the, 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 the coaching, as in so many people were telling me how mad I was, as in what is a private practice? We have never heard about it. What exactly are you going to do? Like so, you're going to sit down every day and talk to people. So how do you make money from that? Because like people didn't know about coaching. They didn't know. So you're saying you're going to have a perfect, uh, private practice, you're going to have an office, and people will be walking in, and they will be booking sessions, and people are like, so people are going to pay to talk to you. Just yeah, just talk to, talking to them. I was like, yes, don't they have people to talk to them in, in their homes? <laughs> and like, so what exactly are you going to talk about? And uh, you know, so, so I, I talk about uh, marriage, I talk about... So you are single, and you are talking about marriage. <laughs> Some of them would even post on, on social media. You know, well, what can a single person, what can a single person? And meanwhile, a zillion of people were making decisions and thriving in their marriages. And some of those that needed to get out, I will say it the way it is, had to get out. Yes, there is always the 2%. Not everything is supposed to work out. But here we are so bent on closing our eyes to the reality that some marriages are not meant to be. And we want everyone to kuguma. And I was like, no. I'm not preaching that message. I am not. I will support those that want to create thriving marriages. And then I will prepare those that need to exit. Peacefully and respectfully. And there are times you are preparing someone to exit a marriage and that is when they find that whatever they want to exit is valuable. By the way, I have gotten so many turnarounds and eyes opening. Instead of telling someone, but maintain it. But, and I take them to the extreme. I know that they love their marriage, but I know that they are making a wrong decision. Now I take them to the extreme. I prepare them for exit. And now their eyes are open. They're like, hey, this, even exiting is hard. I'm like, yes, exiting is not simple. <laughs> so while we talk about that, that is when they realize they're like, no, actually, I didn't want to exit. I wanted to actually maintain. And those that want to exit, that is when they breathe a sigh of relief. They're like, finally, there's someone who understands me. There's someone who can hold my hands and pray for me and pray with me and not judge me because I want to get out of a marriage. So when you start doing anything good, the stones will be there. Eh? They will start throwing them at you. And let me tell you, one thing that God told me, and I will share this with you because you are start, you, 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 you're starting this journey and building this journey. God will always keep your reputation in the minds of people that matter and are necessary to your destiny. God will always keep your reputation in the minds of the people that matter and those that are necessary to your destiny. Because when people start rumors like they had started here with Nehemiah, and so many people have also started, you know, uh, all, uh, have faced that in so many ways. You start, a, you start a rumor thinking that you're going to ruin someone's reputation because whoever starts rumors wants to ruin someone's reputation. And all of a sudden, you don't lift a finger to fight, but God 
One day he actually told me himself, he told me that I will keep your reputation in the minds of those that matter and those that are crucial to your destiny. Anyone else that is not in that category, they can swim in the rumor. They can swallow it. They can eat it. They can have fun with it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, they can somersault in it. But I will keep your reputation in the minds of those that matter and those that are necessary to your destiny. So I need us to, uh, there are certain uh, prayers that we will, we will definitely pray about, but don't stop your progress and don't stop your growth. Don't stop your progress, don't stop your growth. Not for anyone, not because of any rumor, not because of anyone that is calling you down, not of uh, uh, anything that is distracting you. Look out for all the distractions and mark them as distractions and say, I'm not giving attention to this. And th there are things that are good that are also distractions. So look at them and say, I'm also earmarking this, okay? Some of the distractions are even situations. Have you ever gone through a situation and you just felt like, I can't, I can't concentrate right now? I can't. Situations will come. Sicknesses are going to come, okay? If you're married, there are certain seasons that are going to be hard. If you have children, there are certain seasons that are going to be hard with the children. You're in hospital after hospital. This one is being put on oxygen. This one is being put on, on, uh, uh, on a nebulizer. This one, uh, as in, and you're like, God, like what exactly? But even in those places, you should be able to stay the course and build. You should be able to stay the course and think about one more thing. Think about the mandate. Think about the calling. Think about the purpose. Think about the people that don't know what is happening or in your life, but they're on the other side waiting. They are faithful recipients. They want to receive from you. That is why I've told you so many times, I have come out of theater and I have had a session. And someone will say, that is being insensitive of yourself. No, I measure my strength. Definitely those that are around me are like, you know what? No, this, this can't happen. Just maybe uh, hand them over. Right now, God is so gracious that I have Coach Fifi, I have Coach Mole, I have an army to call on. Back then, I didn't have an army to call on. And so people, the call is, is ready. It is Tuesday. And that same day, you went to a theater. There's a time I had back to back two miscarriages, five months. And I got out and I was like, I mean, this is done. It, like it has happened. Do I feel bad about it? Yes. Do I cry about it? Yes. But do I open the Zoom call and speak like nothing happened? They actually didn't know about it. So when they got to know about it, uh, I think a day after or something. No, I don't know when they got to know about it. I even don't know how they got to know. I think I could have mentioned it maybe in the next uh, chapter. When, and they're like, what? Oh, sorry. What? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> but it passed. <laughs> Did it hurt? It hurt. Sometimes situations come because they want to distract us. When COVID came, so many people got distracted. But guess what? Those of us that were... In the making, those of us that knew our callings, that is when we made the most money. Yeah, because that is when people were willing and with time to be helped. And we were available to be helping. This institution started in the lockdown, in my bedroom. And when you look at it right now, you will think it was uh, a huge space. You said you created a table, and, uh, and uh, that is what I told. I called a furniture guy, make me a table, and uh, I, I need a good seat. And then uh, ring light, where are you? And then all of a sudden, I have a phone, I start making videos. We were doing nothing. I was actually, I was a new mother, because I gave birth in, in, in February for, to Ariel, and that is how I, uh, the lockdown phoned me home. So I started. Luckily enough, they used to pick me to come and work. Uh, back then I was on an, an NBS and they would bring me back. But all the time that I was home, I was busy creating a course. I was busy shooting videos while other people were looking at news. Who has died? Counting. Counting how many people that have died. So you realize that so many things can take our distractions. But I've prayed for you and I pray for you that nothing is going to take you away. Take you away from your God-given mandate. There are people that are waiting on the other side. There are cake makers that are waiting on the other side, waiting to listen from you. Yeah? 
There are fashion designers on the other side. There are saloon people on the other side that are waiting. Beauty people. There are singles out there. There are manufacturers out there that are waiting to be saved, that are waiting for someone to hold a hand for them. Okay? So he prayed and said, Lord, strengthen my hands. And I just want us to put our hands uh, up, a bit, uh, up. Just put them up and... What we are going to pray for, you're going to pray in your on your own as I also pray. But you are building something and you need attention. So we are going to pray for the gift of discernment and sensitivity. We are going to pray for a degree of focus in this season and resilience for God to create lion hearts out of us and to raise us up. Lord, we thank you and I thank you for each person that is online, that is on the TV, that is raising their hands as well, as well as the people that are in studio together with me. What we pray pray is that you will strengthen our hands to build, to constantly build, that nothing shall distract us, nothing shall tear us down, not rumors that you have promised that you will maintain and keep our reputation intact in the hearts and the minds of those that matter and those that are kin to our destiny and so shall be it. We are not going to be minded about what other people say but we are going to discern, we are going to be so sensitive, we are going to be so focused and we're going to be resilient. We're going to own the, uh, the lion hearts. We're going to be out there building. We are going to be out there giving of ourselves. We are going to be out there pouring into people's lives. We are going to be out there holding people's hands. We are going to be out there building flourishing homes, thriving marriages, building better citizens in our homes. We are going to be out there and the best that we can ask of you is the favor. The favor that is activated. The favor that is going to create Yet relationships, the favor that is going to open doors, the favor that is going to back us up, that is going to second us, that is going to endorse us, that is going to elevate us, that is going to accelerate us, and that is going to expand us. We thank you, Lord, because this is done. Amen.